During World War II, the graffiti called Kilroy was here. Scribbled on stone walls, buildings, and other surfaces became a cultural phenomenon. It's possible that this image of a bald man named Kilroy, with a large nose hanging over a wall, was the inspiration for the first viral meme, used during World War II and in the United States. Have you ever heard of him? Even though it probably wasn't created by a soldier, it struck a loud chord with many American troops. The cartoon character that most people associate with the term Kilroy was here. Was probably a play on words. It may have been an inspiration from a British creation, named, Mr. Chad, that first appeared a few years before the Kilroy phrase was coined. Mr. Chad, was first seen in a British art sketch as a graffiti, between the late 1930s, and possibly created by George Chatterton. Mr. Chad was used by the British RAF, and civilians alike. He was known as Private Snoops with the Army, and the Watcher with the Navy. Chad graffiti drawings appeared on walls, and shop windows in Britain and other Commonwealth countries. The Chad graffiti was displayed as a visual expression of people's concerns, about resource scarcity in Britain, with rationing of food, clothing, gasoline, cigarettes, and other goods. Kilroy was here, was observed in many places during World War II, beginning in the early 1940s, but did not seem to be referring to shortages of goods like the British War. Kilroy was different from Chad, in its purpose, how it seemed to come about and how it evolved. It wasn't so much the content of the Kilroy graffiti that was unique, but in some cases it was the locations where they were found. Amazingly, Kilroy was seen on the Statue of Liberty, even on the most famous monument, the Arc de Triomphe, in Paris, and in China, on the Marco Polo Bridge. The placement of the graffiti, whether obvious or concealed, did not seem to matter, as long as the Kilroy artist was not caught by the enemy, and the inspirational message was carried on. As an example, Kilroy made an extremely bold appearance at the July 1945 Big Three meeting in Potsdam, Germany. A beautiful marble restroom was reserved exclusively for Truman, Attlee, and Stalin. On the second day of meetings, after using the restroom, Stalin was overheard speaking in Russian to one of his aides. Who is Kilroy? Ordinary people also spread the mystique of the Kilroy message. Several times, newspapers reported hospital staff found Kilroy was here scrawled across pregnant women's bellies when wheeled into delivery rooms. Despite numerous people claiming to be the creator of the graffiti art of Kilroy was here, it was most likely James J. Kilroy, who may have had a little influence from the British Mr. Chad. James Kilroy, a shipyard inspector from Quincy, Massachusetts, believes he was the creator of the graffiti sketch phenomenon, and was backed up by his fellow colleagues. Bethlehem Steel Company shipyard, where Kilroy worked as an inspector, checked each day's riveters total, using a chalk mark. This let the employer know what to pay the workers, since they were paid by the rivet count. The Kilroy was here story began because of rivet counts. Kilroy's boss was angry about the increase in payroll, so he asked Kilroy to investigate the employee's work for a possible explanation. Kilroy discovered that some dishonest riveters would erase the inspector chalk marks and move them back to increase their own rivet count from the ones they stole, claiming more pay. He decided on correcting this problem, using his own method to prevent this unfairness to himself and other workers. He started a new way to check off his own inspections, using a chalk or crayon as before, but used king-sized letters saying Kilroy was here. This became his personal signature checkmark. There had been numerous public speculations about the origins of Kilroy was here graffiti, and the American Transit Association in Boston, Massachusetts wanted to solve it. In 1946 they organized a competition offering a full-size streetcar to the individual who could provide the most convincing evidence that they are the actual Kilroy graffiti creator. James J. Kilroy came forward, and his fellow shipyard buddies confirmed his story. He won the contest. Kilroy was very pleased and had the ATA's streetcar prize delivered to his property in Halifax, Massachusetts, where he added it to his home for his family of nine. In the end, there's a possibility that the creator of that funny graphic drawing, 
of a man with a huge nose, peeking over a wall, with Kilroy was here inscribed, may not be accurately identified. This is particularly notable, considering that a couple other individuals also expressed the Kilroy claim. Could there have been a few more Kilroy creators, during that period of history, who shared some role in that historic phenomenon and have since been lost to us in time? Most likely, but James J. Kilroy is an equally deserving applicant, with some strong evidence, and his work as an inspector demonstrated his commitment to the war effort and warship safety. Furthermore, Kilroy was here, represents more than just James J. Kilroy. It represents the phenomenon of patriotism of all those who served, in whatever capacity, during those trying times of World War II. During times of conflict, courage can be found in many places, among many people and even with the words of others left on walls. In conclusion here is a plaque inscription. Kilroy was here. During World War II this was a symbol for the American serviceman. Any place in the world where one of them went he would see it. It was found in restrooms, on trucks, tanks, ships, bombed out walls, and almost any place it could be printed, penned, scratched or chalked. Even during an invasion or battle, someone would leave this symbol where those following would see it. It was a symbol of courage, pride, encouragement and very definitely a morale booster. That is why it was selected to represent all the service personnel who served in World War II all around the world. This is a loving memorial embracing all who served during the World War II years from 1940 through 1945.